Hey there, out on a beautiful hike on this beautiful crisp Sedona day. Um, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about stillness. I was talking to somebody earlier and they were asking what I do and, and a bit about my work. And I, I said that I, I teach stillness and, and peace. Uh, and they were asking about, well, st what do I mean by stillness? A physical stillness, an emotional stillness, a mental stillness, or a spiritual stillness. And initially I said, well, all of those really. But then when we talked about it more, a beautiful little revelation came that really it's about the emotional stillness and the mental stillness. And when we practice in our meditation stillness, when we practice quieting the thoughts, the mind, the beliefs. Remember that, a, that a, a mind that is not at rest is a mind that is seeking or grasping or clinging or retreating. But when we know the self beyond the mind, we are at rest with the essence of being that doesn't need to seek. It already is everything it is seeking. And it doesn't need to retreat because it knows that it cannot be destroyed. And it doesn't need to cling because it knows that it is at home within itself and it doesn't need to hold on to anything. Anything can come and go. So the emotional stillness and the mental stillness, what that allows, it allows for a spiritual vitality to arise. A, a spiritual aliveness comes online, it blooms, it blossoms when we stop the mental noise and the emotional constriction and anxiety, that relaxation, that stillness allows a spiritual vitality. And it just struck me that it's really not a spiritual stillness, although we do come to recognize that we are initially beautiful peace and a, a, a vast stillness within. But it, it, it enlivens our spiritual aliveness and vitality. And the, the fear of the ego often is that a practice of stillness or peace would be boring. And as it turns out, this spiritual vitality that comes alive when the mental and emotional stillness is present, the spiritual vitality and aliveness that blossoms is far from boring. It is, what, it is what allows us then to lead our life with great authenticity and courage and love and intimacy. It's that spiritual vitality and aliveness and, and truth and authenticity of, of our spiritual being that comes alive. So I guess ultimately I'm speaking to the, the knowing that practicing a, a deep emotional and mental stillness does not create a life that is bland and, and boring and, and not even necessarily quiet because that allows a spiritual vitality and aliveness to blossom and come alive and play. Beautiful.